Hello. Hey, what's going on? Happy New Year. Excellent. That's all right. Hope everyone's good. Let's see. Let's unmute that. Let's do this. Gameplay. What's happening? Oh, I see my body. Where's my face? There we go. All right, are you there? Um, chat, how does this sound? There's a couple people in the room. Does it sound okay? POTUS, can you still hear me? I can. Okay. I hope that window sounds fantastic. Uh, POTUS, will you talk just to make sure? And Jimbo, will you let us know what uh, how it sounds? Sounds good. Fantastic is even that's incredible. Wow. All right. Um, all right. So I guess let's get into it. So Jerome is eight minutes out. Should we start there? Yeah, yeah, good. Can we talk to Rome real quick? Let's do it. Um, all right, so right now the one is the favorite. Cook Creek. Looks okay on the plot. Um, I mean, there's no knocks on this horse, right? On the On the one is the favorite. Seems okay. Improving type. Um, good race on debut. Won the stakes at Delaware. Stepped up B minus in the Nashua. Uh, I mean, looks fine. Um, the second and third choice are the six and the eight. The eight could have a pace advantage. It kind of looks like on the plot. And I guess that'll just sort of depend on the surface distance with the six. Ooh, where did it go? All right, let's scroll down. Um, look at the eight first. So, uh, see some turf indications there was pressed. I mean, that would just be the key, right? Is this horse has to get out in front. It's kind of a quick turnaround coming back in 16 days for a horse that's needed a little bit more time between starts. Uh, and then it's got to stretch out in distance. I mean, just the pace advantage would be the thing with the eight, but I'm kind of a little bit iffy. The six looks okay to me, actually. Um, I like this progression. Decent race on debut. Du dual lack room. Was still green in the second start. Has shown dual, uh, been able to show grit like in multiple races. Was extra wide last out. Speed figure progression. Um, that looks positive. Um, as a second choice, I. I mean, let's see. And could have a little bit of a pace advantage as well as far as surface distance. Maybe sits right behind the eight and has first run. And we know this horse has grit um, if there is if there is that duel, uh, which is cool. And then, let's see, where else? Um, the three, three, seven, two. Uh, hold on. Three's been on the turf the entire time. Um, looks like it's kind of coming off a top effort. I mean, not out of the question, but... I think you'd probably... You probably wanted this horse last time when he was almost 24 to 1. It's not the world's best kind of uh, race in terms of punting. You know, it's not something you look at and you, you're seeing a ton of value out there. I mean, other than the one being potentially over bet. Yeah. I mean, to me, it looks like the six. Like, I, you know, as the current was four to one just a second ago, um, but essentially a third choice on a horse that's, you know, I don't really see, I don't really see any knocks. I don't see anything different between the one and the six. I mean, class-wise, the ones had a little bit more experience, you know, but 
still light erase types. Um, I'm going to talk about the five already. The five is not taking any money for another one that's been kind of progressive. That kind of seems like a negative sign on a horse like that. Don't you think? I, I, I tend to think so. I, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's for a stakes race. Um, just to me, it just doesn't, I, I'm not feeling any, I, I mean, I agree with you on the six. If you're kind of like looking for some value, the six would be it. But otherwise, or the, uh, you know, it just doesn't yeah. look to me like a great betting race. Yeah. No, Despite, you know, a somewhat vulnerable favorite, um, right. taking a little too much money. Right, right. It's just pretty much like the knock is the price, which we're probably going to see in the Smarty Jones later and have this conversation once again. Um, the sevens taking money it just doesn't seem very fast because sometimes the Laurel figures can be a little bit inflated um, and paired up that number in the Remsen. And at this point, it's like this horse has to get faster. Um, the eight's warming up right now, so they're likely going to kind of do that pace advantage thing. Um, and then the other horse we didn't talk about is this two, um, got a favorable trip last out. There was a save tactics plus maybe the race shape. Yeah. It had the race flow, um, late again, another one that probably, you know, 10 to one in a maiden race is probably a little bit more value than 10 to one in the, uh, in this stakes race. So, yeah. Um, I, I agree with, with our, um, president here that probably not the best betting race. Um, but if anything, I, I, I would say the six is probably, you know, kind of the current, you had to make a play, probably the way to go. Yeah. And certainly the eight, as you said, is probably, you know, could end up having that kind of pace advantage. Um, but that's, you know, no, no great value either. So yeah, yeah, I, 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 I kind of, yeah, I, I'm kind of like negative on the eight a little bit, just because like we have those two turf notes, um, and it's just you know the horse has had so much time between starts, which obviously you know a horse that's like lightly raced and those aren't overly taxing efforts. You know, it's not like it's like a hard or regress or like you know big speed figures or anything to need that much time between starts. There's usually a reason for that. Um, so you know you're keeping that in mind. The horse came off uh, the 166 day layoff, broke the maiden, needed 48 days. It's not a crazy amount of time. There is a scratch in between, um, but only a B minus uh, for a win, which is like below typically what it takes to get a win. So it's not like that effort's that great. And now it's coming back in 16 days and it's just for a horse that's never run on short rest. It's um, also a short field at Aqueduct. You know, it's not, it's not, you know, coming off some really impressive, deep, you know, allowance field. So, you know, it's not even kind of, hasn't been tested class wise either. Right. Yeah. This, yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of, that's why I'm like, well, the five would be kind of like if you're looking for that new shooter, a horse that's, you know, improved, has gone distance, you know, things like that. Like that would be a horse that I think like a, a wise guy would kind of lean on. But the fact that the horse is 17 to one is like, it, that just doesn't seem like it's a mistake. Like sometimes it can be a mistake. Like people are like not seeing something and you're like, oh, this horse is like, getting away with something but it seems like in this case i mean it's pretty obvious what this horse has done and they're like not touching it yeah naira too it's not like it's you know thistle down and something yeah. sneaks sneaks by um right yes exactly yeah because i mean looks okay it looks okay in the pot too i mean surface distance is square and quadrant one so I mean, that wouldn't, I, I guess that wouldn't be the worst play, but that is just kind of a, a little bit of a negative. Oh, we have our facts here. Oh my God. Let me get a picture. Uh, I'm talking about Santa Anita. Fuck, I missed it. But they did. <laughs> uh, damn, I got a message. Uh, I got a message earlier. Someone wanted to know a, a, a fact about um, Bill Buckner and they, they did say it, but fuck, I missed it. Um, I'm talking about the facts that they're putting up at Santa Anita, supposedly our, our betting angles. So the betting angle for, what is this horse? The five is that the, the horse is named after somebody that used to play baseball. 
Hello, could you help me find the Pedigree Sims Anonymous channel? Oh man, there's so many. I, I wouldn't even know which one to direct you to. Um, I mean, Twitter just just loves loves that horse. Beep. Can't even say the word. I don't want to even get kicked off the, the stream, but... <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right, so they're going in the gate in the grim... Grim looking background at Aqueduct. We'll see what's coming up. We'll see what's coming up next. Um, we got Fairgrounds, 18 out. Oaklawn is 12. We'll go Oaklawn next. I'll keep this up for um for the Aqueduct race and then click over. Click over to Oaklawn and make sure I have that like queued up. By the way, even when it's sunny in the rest of the New York metro area, it's always overcast at Aqueduct. So this is normal what's going on right now? Yeah, it's like Detroit. It's always overcast. <laughs> There's like a, a blizzard going on outside my window right now. It's been snowing since like 10 o'clock. Hey, that was, you volunteered that, that move, so... No sympathy. no sympathy here. I wonder what the what the TOS is if I have the I guess you guys can all you know have the, the video. Looks like the two is a, a little bit slog, but that's kind of the run style. The eight is going out there. Do the worst camera angles ever. What is this? What is this? There's like somebody with like a camera phone, like in the, the stands. Ground. Yeah, on the ground, like filming. What the fuck is that? Head on, baby. <laughs> oh. It's like it's New Year's Day and Bob slept in, so there's no, <laughs> it's only the head on cameras there, guy. Yeah. But they like they like were like oh Jimmy's here Jimmy can you sit like front by, right by the rail and like put your, put your Bob was in the shitter and just got there so now we get to the right angle. All right, it's pretty pretty much running to the plot here. He eight in front, four is tracking. One. Yeah, six got the six is getting the trip right. Yeah, see that grit six. One's under a drive. I mean, they just might, there might not be any change in running order. So it's going to, here we go, back to, back to wow. what's the name, Bob down there? Uh, yeah, this is, holy shit. If somebody who watches a lot of horse races, this is like impossible. Like that's like the worst angle you could possibly see to what's going on. All right, six has a lead. One's on the left lead trying to close in. Five hey, is closing. Listen. Here comes his five. Yeah. Six, five, one. Well, I think that was like properly dissected, right? It was not a great open race. I think we were in agreement that the six was the value if there was any and that, you know, otherwise yeah. it wasn't the world's greatest race. The one was vulnerable, especially at the price. And we really didn't know what to make of the five and ran uh, ran much better than expected. So interesting. It's like, yeah, it's the angle that you expect on the uh, on a nationwide telecast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, for what it's worth, you guys that are like watching this, I handicap this race like this is the first time i looked at this race like literally like right now handicap that race it's so much easier when you have the odds because it's just like oh who do i want to take that's so much easier well you know what it does get a little it, it does get a little interesting when you like i've had the conversation with people about how far in advance you should really start kind of seriously handicapping a race so i think it does bring up an interesting question which is you know especially without odds, which is everything you need, you know, I think getting the general good feel for the race and then kind of playing to the odds is the best way, or at least, I don't know. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I mean, I have to do stuff like days in advance. Like there's no way around it. That's like the job description, you know, and I'm doing my best and it, and it's like extra work because I'm, I'm already like thinking like, what, what are how are people going to play this race even though i don't have an odds board like i have the morning line and that's as good as whatever and then there's how the public's going to actually like react to this race um 
yeah, it makes it so much more difficult than when, you know, we're just looking at it being like, all right, one, certainly capable, but is overbet. Um, really doesn't have that strong of an edge to be that strong of a favorite. Um, the questions just on the form cycle of the eight wasn't crazy, and it was just kind of like the six. <laughs> the six is, is standing out. I mean... Well, sometimes it's by default, right? It's almost like, and that's what's I think really hard for a lot of people to understand. It's not necessarily picking the horse you think's going to win, which yeah. is a very odd kind of kind of notion for people that aren't used to doing this kind of day in and day out. It's finding the horse at the right price at the right time. So that's what that is. Like, I don't think anybody said, "Yeah, I think that six is just you know that horse is going to win the Derby." <laughs> you know, it's it, it's a matter of all right at four to one or nine to two at the time. You know, that's the best value. Makes sense. Fits. You know, is certainly a better option than the one. So, yeah, yeah. You have two horses that look almost identical as far as like their form cycle, current speed figures. The six might even have a pace advantage, which turned out to be you know the key. Um, and the price is better. It was the third choice. It's like it's kind of a kind of a no brainer. Um, all right, so let's move on to Oakland. So the favorite right now, we'll start there, is the five who, you know, looking at the plot, one of those horses that certainly can win this race looks pretty strong. Um, with the eight and the ten are both seven to two. Um, then the eleven is seven, and we've got double digit odds on the rest. So uh we'll start start digging in with the five here. Um, so third start of the form cycle looks like to be cycling back around. Oh, oh, I do see something I'm not crazy about though. This mile distance is kind of, it's kind of sketchy because they've been running, they've been running this horse. Oh, wait a second. Let me just double check something here. I mean... I just wanted to see like how, oh shit, it froze. Okay, it's back. Um, how long Diodoro has had this horse and like why they have it fucking froze again. All right, come on. I guess it's not happy that I have like the Twitch, the Skype. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many one word, too many one word social media kind of platforms here. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot happening. A lot going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, just why this horse, they've been almost exclusively running this horse at a sprint distance and now he's going to stretch out to a mile. So just like with the barn change, I mean, it's capable, but that's, that's one thing just as far as if, you know, you're looking at a favorite at a short price, um, to knock. So especially in a field like this, so let's, let's keep digging. Um, I'm going to, I think the fact that every horse in this race has like maybe 12 years old today. Uh, yeah, Chrome is struggling. And there's like a million running lines. I don't think it's happy about that. Which typically it doesn't, it doesn't impact it, but with all this other stuff going on, it's probably an issue. All right. No, it's still doing it. Okay. Uh, the 10, oof, yuck. I mean, <laughs> whew, you're taking three to one on this horse. Holy shit. I mean, the barn has been, this is um not the assistant to Peter Miller, but. It's Peter Miller. It's Peter Miller. It's Peter Miller. Yeah. Um, I mean, back at a mile is good. The class draw, it's probably, this horse is probably in a spot to win. But that recent form is gross. I just would not want to take, I just would not want to take three to one. Uh, Chad is saying the 11 seems like good value at Oak one. Let's take a look. I don't, I mean, I don't like the no finish last out. That was a slightly higher level, but then was a no line last out. I mean, but like not last out, but prior to that, um, at a similar level, <sighs> Emily, where do you where do you put the ten thousand? I mean, you do a lot of Oakland work. Where do you put this like starter allowance ten thousand in terms of like class level? Like, where does that fall? What are you looking at? 
the a lot of the running lines um, of horses in the race that come from ten thousand uh, allowance starter allowance races. Oh, like the one? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. I'm just wondering, like, what that how that fits in from a class perspective. Um, so I use. Do you see this like column right here? This yeah. LFR. I use that to try to compare. So gotcha. like this, like this November 25th race is the same as a 91, 97 to today's race. So I'd say it's like more of a lateral move. Gotcha. I think that's a really hard thing when you, um, there's just so many conditions these days to know kind of what one means w with the other without kind of optics or some other type of really good program. Yeah, no, it can be, it can be absolutely tough. And yeah, just, and the, the figure range is like what it takes to win and then the grade also helps because the grade, the grade is kind of an overall, uh, like an overall assessment of the performance. So like a B is a winning race for the level. So if I see a horse that like was running at a similar par and even if they finished fourth, but they earned a B, I know this is a horse that can compete at this, at this type of level. Got one minute here. I got to pick up the pace. All right. Uh, the eight is the next, uh, first to quit. It's like a bit of a class move. That's probably one of the horses you're looking at, right? I mean, this yeah. pace looks like it's going to be fast as fuck because there's so many horses in here that want to be forwardly placed, and you have that five that's stretching out. Who can kind of sit like – who's like quadrant two? Who's nine? Like nine and two. Nine, two. Who are these guys? I mean, they're 19 to 1 and 16 to 1. I don't even know if I need to know much more at this point. Um, the two is coming off. Oh, well, that's another horse that wants to be forwardly placed, though. The two, just kind of going back to those races. But at the number, you could make a case. Um, and then the nine. Another one that's stretching out. Dude, can any. I don't think anybody's going to win. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We're at the point. Uh, what's over the six? Twenty-two. I mean, six. I mean, six maybe. That's not a bad spot for this race shape. I mean, the track has been playing kind of somewhat speed favoring today, right? But it I mean, has. I guess been... It has, but the but it's been also been logical. It's not like it's been super fast paces. Sure. To where you're like, okay, that's one hundred percent the track. You mean the one race bias? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, shit, I mean, the one? I don't know. That's why this race looks statty. The one, one six, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Does anybody out there have any kind of strong feelings about this race? I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't care about taking on the five or the ten. I mean, both those horses could certainly win, but there's some knocks. I mean, I guess you can make a case for the 11. The trip is going to be a little bit rough uh, with the pace and the outside post needing a needing a top effort. But, you know, let's see. The 10 just slogged. Go for it. Yeah, that two is showing a little bit more speed. Would have been better if they kind of took that horse back. The two and the five hooked up in a duel. They are going pretty fast. 23 is pretty quick for this course and for the distance. The five is tracking. And again, it kind of just looks like the plot. The five is tracking right off that pair. And then you've got four, somebody else, six, nine are all stalking. Three is down inside. Yeah, it's still pretty quick. I mean, four starting to move early. I don't know how that's going to work out. Maybe that's a good move. Four isn't a good Four has a lot of run. Five also getting a trip. The sloggy 10 starting to move. Same with the one. Four just got stopped cold, but I don't think that horse was like quickening either. It's gonna be what five five four ten maybe or five ten four. Meh. 
Yeah, whatever. Nobody won as I projected. There were no winners in that race. There were no winners. Exactly. There was no winners. All right. What's next? Uh, Santa Anita is going in the gate. We'll see how the baseball player does. It seems like it's a strong angle. It beats spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Dude. Spicy spaghetti face. Oh. I could just do just do a whole Twitch stream just like reading those. Just like a comedy. A comedy bit. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody, nobody would actually think it's serious. So. Um, what's going on in this race? I didn't like how that baseball player horse was training, I don't think. I thought he was training okay. Um, oh, this this four was like training like a a runner. So let's see if Let's see if he does the damn thing at one to five. Okay. If this horse does win at one to five, just turn on Twitter and everyone will tell you like how great the pedigree is, what the mom, the mom won stakes, the siblings did something. The siblings were also horses. <laughs> 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 All right. Four. Oh, one like one like a good thing, just like his daddy. <laughs> exactly. Ran to his pedigree. Pedigree players nailed it. One to five. Straight fire. That that horse is straight fire. Is that the sire? Yeah. Okay. Calbreds. Yeah, right. it's amazing they'll even do it with calbreds, you know? Yeah. Uh, fairgrounds, you got race five. Hi, Frost. How's your, uh, ginger pussy? Oh, it's exhausted. <laughs> yeah? It's exhausted. It's up way past, way past its bedtime. Oh, did you, did you guys stay up late? You know, it's uh, amazingly, yeah, but it's like, the, you know, it's old people staying up late. So it involves coffee, not drinking. Mm. I fell asleep early to like, I'm not even joking, watching Murder, She Wrote. I'm like straight up old. Yeah, that's, I think you got me beat on that. And we had <laughs> Sanka. Yeah, good job. Sitting here betting horses, falling asleep at eight o'clock to murder. She wrote, "I'm basically 80. <laughs> that JB Fletcher. She She's was. In, she, that was like season five. She was started out. She was in jail. It's like, oh gosh, this, this is going to be intense. Hope she gets out. Mm, what am I looking at here? Uh, race five at fairgrounds. Uh, make sure I'm in the right place. The five is currently favored. Certainly makes sense. I mean, it was a necessary drop needed last out. Um, capable to move up. I mean, the speed figures are on par for this level. Um, some gross form, but uh, the four is also five to two and then the nine is seven to two four it's basically the same as the five maybe oh yeah what's up with the six hell of a life looks like i'm gonna improve right here i was on the turf little burst moving off cover top two together at the wire it's not a bad race Mm, maybe not the best race flow for this horse, though, huh? Yeah, the pace looks a little... Even though it's fire, it's a lower speed rate. So, well, it's too late. Too late to make anything happen now. Um, as they're going in the gate. Let's see. Move on to... It'll be Santa Anita four. Are we done with Aqueduct? Aqueduct's got one more. All right, I guess we can take a look. Uh -huh. 
rid of this. I'm going to definitely keep Santa Anita up. That way we can get the facts. What's really important in these races. Let's keep that up. I almost need like a third crash the system. Santa Anita is a thumbs down. Kind of seems that way. It's been what? Chalk, chalk, chalk. The first three races in a row. Like, and not even like three to one chalk. It was two to one. I guess there was co-favorites in the first. Two to one winner. Then on a three to five. And then a one to five. That is a bust. I mean, San Anita in general these days has been a thumbs down, which is sad. Tomorrow, tomorrow looks good, actually. Tomorrow, tomorrow has some, there's some weight on that card. I hate be betting it. GGF top, San Anita bottom. Ooh, it's kind of sexy. All right, what's happening, Fairgrounds? The one, the five's trying to come through the inside. It's a little, a little intimidated. Six is trying to come over the top. Six, one's trying to hold on for dear life, and the one holds. One, six, nine, five. Yeah, kind of not, kind of not surprising. Where's the nine? Is the nine pushing that pace? I forget. All right, it's too late now. We'll go, um, Oakland is 18 minutes, but get a little bit more time in, in this race. Santa Anita, we're just here for the, just here for the facts. Anyways. That's what's important. Okay, at Oakland coming up, um, the six is the favorite. Oh, this horse fucked me yesterday. I mean, not like in general, but not, but when I brought up the race, like the whole play was around this horse being in the race. And they ran in this spot and said, just made, made all my work completely useless. <laughs> that should be like, that should be jail, actually. That just enter your horse in one spot. Don't, do, don't do entering your horse in like five different spots on one weekend. That's, like, not okay. Yeah, it's selfish. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know how this works? Like, people are, are betting these races. Like, pick a spot. If it's too tough, then you lose. That's how it goes. And yeah. this this horse could lose this race. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, Medina Spirit drawing you outside in Philadelphia. It's like, oh, I got to leave. Too much. Yeah. Too hard. <laughs> yeah. Too hard. <laughs> Pick, no cross entering, pick a lane. Fuck yeah. Exactly. The game is the game. And I mean, uh, honestly, this spot does not look easier. There's actually more, it looks like more contention in this race than there was yesterday. Worse when it happens in Breeders' Cup races. Um, in the Breeders' Cup races, though, at least when they finalize the draw, it's decided. So I don't, you know, it, that's not as bad. But, like, when I'm handicapping, what day? I don't even know what day that was. It was yesterday? Yesterday was Friday. So I'm handicapping Friday on Wednesday. They haven't even drawn this card. It's like you have no clue that the horse is entered in another race. And if had I have known, I wouldn't have wasted my time picking that race because that was the whole reason for riding that race is to play against that one horse. But whatever. That goes back to the very first thing, why it's much easier to do this when you have all the pieces in front of you. All right. So, so fuck this six, basically, long story short. 
Um, yeah, that's a spite play right there. That's a spite play against. Yeah, exactly. Not only are we going to play against it, we're going to like actively, actively root against it. Yeah. Yeah, the thing I didn't like about this horse in that race is if you look at where this horse is winning, it's when he gets the easy lead, loan, favorable trips, just like like the connections. They just try to pick like the most favorable spot. Yeah, the horse can be fast early, but as soon as they get pressure, dung cakes. And okay. it looks like the four and the seven are just as fast. The two is drawn inside, has first call speed. Can be a bit of a slog, but he has first call speed. No doubt, this but one, high... one could make the argument that Maker is excellent at spotting. At times, you know, Maker is one of those like streaky, streaky trainers. Do you, do you notice that? Like where it's like every horse, every horse is well spotted, and then like all of a sudden isn't good at spotting horses. Interesting how that turns out. Yeah, exactly. Um, the one actually looks okay in here. Second off the layoff, I guess class-wise it's a little bit of a lateral move, but probably softer. I mean, and just from the fact that this horse looked like it needed a race. Has run here at Oakland Park, has run some faster races. Doesn't win. That's the problem. But I guess if you're compensated, seven to one, we'll have to keep an eye on that. It's a potential, but that's for a horse that doesn't win, you need a little little meat on the bone <laughs> to, make, <laughs> to make a win play. Uh one of those one of those good ones that looks like shit on the plot too. Um Good for underneath, at the least, if you're playing exotics. Um, lateral class move on the two. That's kind of that sloggy, sloggy guy. Um, the two, I mean, the two has no business being 22 to one. Yeah, it's kind of scary, right? I mean, not one to bet with a lot of ton of confidence, but... I mean, a definite overlay. Yeah, but this is this is like like the five in that other race where there's no reason why this horse should be a big price unless like they know it's gonna suck. Because these are, I mean, that's pretty obvious. There's recent fast numbers in the money finishes. Like people love that shit. They do, and I wonder if some of it is Gutierrez off. That is true, because people have a major crush on him right now. Where is he Super riding? Super crush. Super crush. Not not a Hall of Famer like um, Jessica, but... True. Getting to that. Getting to that. Is the nine bet down? Hell yes, it is. I mean, a little bit. I mean, the, the nine is okay. Looks good on the plot. I just wonder, I'm always a little sus when those those numbers at Gulfstream Park, like when they transfer, but it did run okay at Churchill Down, so. No, uh, no real strong knocks on the, uh, on the nine for everybody that wants to bet their boyfriend kind of another kind of another race where it's like you just let the six beat you you're like okay that's fine no oh, yeah for sure two to one in a seemingly wide open field i mean you can have it yeah yeah we have to discuss wide open fields by the way yeah that's something that needs to be discussed <laughs> wide open no opinion <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is, I mean, this is like, yeah, this field is wide open because we're saying the favorite is, is a no, like if is a big X, not the race is wide open, uh, put it in a box with three others, you know? Right, right. 
Yeah. How do you feel about the seven, Mr. McKnight? Mm. Seven looks like it's going to be a casualty for the six. Yeah, it pays casualty. Yeah. It just kind of looks like the the four can go either way. Um, what's that? X Baffert turf force, which is always a strong strong angle. Now now in for a tag. Um, completely going backwards in numbers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like you 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 can't even parody that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that horse is going to try to be forwardly placed as well. So it looks like those three should probably cook each other, um, especially if the two tries to press. Um, and even the one might have to show early speed from the inside. Just might not have any other choice in order to get a trip. Um, at least be somewhat forwardly placed. So it looks like the pace is going to be pretty contentious. The five is cutting back to a sprint. That could be good. Yeah, the five also looks like one. I'm not looking at the plot, but it does look like one that could kind of potentially be a benefit of, of, of having a decent trip behind the speed. Yeah. I don't know if that's how it plots, but. Yeah, well, the plot's up right now. Um, huh. Yeah, it kind of, I mean, the form is a, is a little bit dirty, but it, just because you have the big change from standard to surface distance, but the horse is taking money. Um, the horse is taking about as much money as the four, who the four is five to one on the morning line and the five is 12 to one. So that signals to me that the five is alive, even though they're both currently eight to one, seven to one. That's for our players out there. Um, now, 11 as well seems to be a bit of an overlay. Yeah. What's going on there? Mm, it's kind of moving up in class, though. This yeah, horse, is, Yeah, I mean, this horse is going to have a rough trip, too, because it's another one that likes to be forwardly placed, and it's just parked way out there. Yeah. Like, how does this horse win? Yeah, I don't know what what's it's it's kind of weird because this horse it's like they don't they don't really know like kind of what to do with him. He had those two good races that were sprints back in May where the horse is forwardly placed, but it's not like kind of just like the horse got the trip that day. That's me pretty wide. Um, yeah, I'm kind of leaning like five, actually. Five, nine. Five just got hit to six. I mean, the five, okay, but that, I mean, that... It makes you wonder on the five if like, they're actually betting this horse or they're just betting those recent ones. Right. Yes, yeah, no, 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 no. Not, not Super Mario. Yes, Raylu. Everybody's crush. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to well, the five, but back up to seven. Um, it's those two for me.
while we're waiting for this race and waiting for the fun facts. Um, this stream is brought to you by Patreon. So some new people. Uh, Jared, thank you so much. Brian, thank you so much. Peter May, big supporter. Thank you so much. Joe, sometimes the names don't show up. Um, William Leonard, big VIP. Thank you so much. Uh, Lawrence, thank you. Another all access. Much appreciated. Let's see if there's anybody else that I'm missing. I think that is everybody. So yes, if you haven't already, do the Patreon thing for as little as $3 a month. Let's see, what else is coming up? What else are you guys looking at right now? Fairgrounds? Fairgrounds was kind of fun last time because we just got to like talk shit on Joe. Here, uh, like the chances of the number five Maxine machine. Her second went to the number four sweet and sassy. The horse that finished oops, behind oops. her last out was only being elected a quarter by Maxine machine. Triple TR was a uh, two and a quarter lengths in front of sweet and sassy, but sweet and sassy may have needed the race. It was her first try in about eight or nine weeks uh, for this daughter of morning line, sweet and sassy up there at odds of eight to one. And you look at the synthetic races at Arlington and the turf races, she's got a win, a second and a third. The dirt race running at uh, Churchill was the only poor effort of her career. And you look at that pedigree, it's all turf morning line out of a kitten's joy mare. Second race back off of the laugh could take a step forward. Value certainly there at odds of eight to one. Or third went to the number three. Miss this is your Twin Spires market mover. Eight to five on her. And I was at Kentucky Downs the day that she broke her maiden. It was opening day there. It rained late in the morning and early in the afternoon. And the turf was, the, the best word I could use is wonky. What? Most of the horses that one came from off the best the words. A couple of the best yeah, words. He uses the best words. Haven, I'm not going to take anything away from her. She was super. Wonky's awesome. never been the best word for anything. She steadied early. She switched out for a while. She sustained her rally. Ran down dueling leaders late. Wonky. Real good doing it. Now the two. I see horses run kind of wonky. I've never seen the course kind of wonky. Well, no, that's not true. It's it's um it's a uh, firm, yielding, good, and wonky. <laughs> True. She had three wide, uh, three wide stalking trips. She had aim on the leader's lane. She just kind of sort of flattened out like a pancake in the stretch. She'll run with blinkers for the second time, which could be a good angle. She certainly bred to get two turns. She you're you're much better off flattening out. Live on the top like the anything other than a pancake. Owned and bred by SF Racing and trained by Joe Sharp. Number three. You can't really, in like a horse racing analogy, can't be like flattened out. Flatten out like a horse in the stretch. It's too on the nose. I think it's more like a crepe than a pancake. One was second. Yeah. On grass race career start number two at Mammoth back on September the nineteenth, and then came back and uh, broke the maiden. Uh, that turf race, I, sh I should say. Um, as far as Jimbo over at at Santa Anita, yeah, I, I think that the she was pretty legit there as the one as the O'Neill horse. Second time in an The nine is okay, but. I think it's one of those two seem really logical. You look at the pedigree, it certainly tilts towards the turf by a stern out of a streak cry mare for this Godolphin. I gave the one a look, but the one is out. Live on the tote board, Pearl Earring, along with the number one uh, as part of the entry. The other half, trained by Brad Cox, also a Godolphin homebred. Full focus. Now, this one has never been on the turf. 2 uh, 6 cold exacta. Where at? Routing at Keeneland. She stumbled at the start, got a pocket. Trip, I don't like that six. On the turn that magical gray horse. Is that what you're talking about, Santa Anita? That horse got such a setup last out. So plotty. I mean, I guess. Special weight and only beat five horses that particular day. In the follow-up race against Boma at Churchill. Kind of seems just like Pasadena. 
Uh, main track played fairly that day. She got caught uh, way back from the rail. She passed some tired horses, but you know didn't overly impress that particular day either. But again, the two for the price of one. I don't. I don't like. We're. I mean, Joe's going four five in here, and they're coming out of the same race. I mean, the fours would be the value, just kind of straight up. I mean, I know that the five ran that better than look, but this is a, this is a step up in class for both of these horses. You're asking earlier, like, how do you assess class? Like that that race on twelve two was a sixty nine. Let me shut this down. Was a was a sixty nine to seventy five optics figure range, and today's a seventy five eighty one. So like both those horses, you know, whatever. Um, the one is getting the class drop. That makes sense. I mean, it's first turf, but. You're getting two for the price of one. What's happening here? Um, I mean, this is a little bit up in class, but you could still project upside for this horse. Um, yeah, I'd be I'd be a little bit a little bit cautious there. The three looks that's the market mover currently the second choice. I'd say if anything, the value is on would be on the three. At this point. All right, going in the gate at, at Oaklawn. Um, let's see here. Thirsty Frost in the background. All right, let's see how contentious this, let me, fuck, where's this, uh, what this pace is. So the six didn't even get out in front, they're going to stalk. The four and the eight, uh, four just went clear. The eight is tracking, the 11 is wide. Whoever was on the, uh, oh, that was, that was El Presidente. The 11 could get a trip now. Cause didn't get caught, didn't get caught too wide. Cause those other two horses didn't make the lead. Uh, the six and the seven. It's pretty quick, isn't it? Sub twenty two. Uh. Or not. I think it's. I think it's okay. It doesn't really look like it much is moving from the back. <laughs> Five is trying to run on. Yeah, they projected that's, uh, yeah, 11 got the trip. The one comes into the exotics. The six is a sl total sled face. 10 is closing. 11, one, four, and 10 are in a photo for show. Yeah, I mean, seven, seven didn't show speed. Maker picks two races and then doesn't even do what they're supposed to do. So that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> But good, you know, heads up, heads up on the 11. That was just like, you know, we're probably going to get caught wide, but oh, no one's going to go. Perfect, perfect outside tracking trip. Yeah, listen, I mean, you look at the, it's a quarter at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a flat yeah. quarter. No, oh, I already flipped the page. I think I missed Aqueduct. Yeah, Aqueduct's done. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Fairgrounds. Santa. Whoa. What just happened? Santa need a one minute. Five minutes at the, what the fuck? Fairgrounds. Yeah, I think the five is over bet at Fairgrounds. Even though that was a good race, it's still up in class, deep closer, not 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 the strongest short price. 
And then I think the two is kind of, two's going to the gate like he needs a nap. But the two look pretty strong. <laughs> in here. Be able to sit. Sit off the pace. Have that first run, saving ground. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, just from the plot, I mean, the five being the favorite, coming out of the common races, the four, and the four is... 10 to 1, or now 8 to 1, the 4 would be the value every day of the week. Dude, ITP is still going. ITP versus the world right now. He's never been wrong, so it He's, is it is not easy to have that burden. He, we did catch him wrong a few days ago. That is true. I'm not going to say what it was, but we did catch him. In that is true. Not going to say it publicly. And listen, I, I mean, I think we would all agree that he's generally on the kind of has the right mindset versus the people he's arguing with, but the bedside manner makes him difficult to, uh, you know, I mean, he can be right, but his message isn't getting through because of the bedside manner. Yeah. Um, but he will absolutely F that chicken as we know. Well, yeah. And I mean, on the, what was it on the recent, on the recent Jason beam and I, and I kind of, and I kind of agree with him on this, just sort of in general, um, that he's like, I've tried to be nice. Like, I've tried to go about it the way that people would want you to go about it, right? Like, have the reasonable conversations. And you get the same result. So now it's, you know... Yeah. And now it's get, well, like why hold why hold back? Like why you yeah. know why try why try to reason? No, and you he know? is he is right. I think the problem is when you're attacking what somebody does for a living and saying essentially, and he's not wrong. He's essentially saying like what you're doing is 100 percent incorrect. And in fact, not only is it incorrect, it's harmful to the very people that you are kind of tasked with kind of helping. So somebody's natural reaction to that is going to be to dig in. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, he did it. He did it to me right off the bat. You know, when I first started working at Brisnet and I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't I don't have any I have no other skills in this world. <laughs> like, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck else you want me to do? You know, like, <laughs> do I look like the type of person that's going to run customer service? Like, no, like, I don't like. I look, so I went back and forth and I mean, he, again, like he wasn't wrong, but it's like, if they're going to put anybody in this position, like, let me do it. Cause at least I'm going to do my best and understand who my customers are. Like, yeah. And it's also an impossible thing to do not to like, not to, not to kind of, uh, be on the side of people who, um, unlike yourself and a handful of others that are really, really good at what they do. A lot of these people are quite frankly, terrible at what they do, but it's not easy to pick every single race to have to pick three or four horses because how often as a handicapper do you look at a race like we already have today and said, I, that's just, this race has no value or I'm passing or I don't really like anything or, I, you know, I don't see the favorite as vulnerable. And you can't say that in their position. Yeah. I mean, I, I do when, but it's at, it's at the, the risk of what a lot of people don't want to do is they want their, they want to be at the end of the day, say I had six winners on top. Like, right. I don't care. I'll have two winners on top and both of them pay, you know, $25. And like, that's, that's fine. Like that's a win, you know? And those other six to eight races, whatever, like I don't even care about them. They were, right. you know, there, it's still a winning day, but people feel that that's the success is to say, oh, I, I swept the card. Like, I never try to sweep the card. That's like 
it's like the stupidest thing to try to do. Right. <laughs> like, right. like I, I might, I might one day randomly luck into it from like some just like dumb luck, but I, I don't ever like attack the card trying to be like I'm gonna pick every single winner on top because you're gonna yeah, win because it nobody top. listen. You can't, you can't approach the game like that and expect to have any measure of success whatsoever. And that's that's kind of his main that's his main point to people is that their, their whole mindset is incorrect about, you know, how they're going about it. And he's right about that. It's the complete wrong mindset. Yeah. All right. Going into the gate at fairgrounds. Um, let's see. What's up? Yeah, it's Sanity is 25 out. Oakland's 18. So let's do that. Um, the six is the favorite again at Oakland. And then there's its prices outside of that. So six is the two to one. Then five is five. Um, 12 and 13. Both sevens. 11 is nine. Double digits on the rest. So. I can say in this case, I think the six looks legitimate. <laughs> I think this the six should the six or anybody. Yeah, I'm, this... I'm with you on that. I mean, I didn't try to. You know, I played a pick four there starting that last race because I like that eleven. And I couldn't. I couldn't really see beyond the six. I mean, I think the ten at the price makes a little bit of sense, but but probably doesn't. To me, it isn't going to beat the six. It's just a. Yeah, so you make yeah, sense of the exotics playing playing it kind of underneath. Yeah, but, I mean the six. It's like the six is coming back off a layoff, but this could not be the most. I this is the most ideal spot for this horse coming back off a layoff. Just like the way this race shapes up, it just looks. It looks right. Favorable running style. Speed figures on par. Just in this group. I mean, and if it's not that horse, then you're hitting all but six. Not all, all, but all but six. Or you're playing six single. Yeah, you're going to FBG that shit right there. Yeah. Or Michelle. Michelle did the all yesterday, including the one to two. Oh, good. All right, so that's that's that. Um, sorry, let me put up this fairgrounds because they're because they're going right now. Um, and it's kind of yeah, pretty much like the plot. You got six and seven up front with four tracking, and five is outside that pair. Pretty pretty moderate, pretty moderate pace. Three between that pair. Three's in some traffic. It's not not the most ideal trip, so we'll see. See how the class class handles it. Six is backing up. As that circle projects. Five is under a drive. Seven just poke little head in front. Seven's like, come on, surface distance plot. Give me some square. Five is trading water. Seven looks like it's going to hold. Here's that four, the value. Seven, one, four. Yeah, the five is just not, was not a good favorite. That up in class. That was, that was a little bit harder to find, but made all the difference there. Because the five had a good trip, no excuse. Uh, all right. So, Oakland, whatever. But, oh, we will do this. Okay. Because the Smarty Jones is race nine. So, just looking at the doubles, the three, the three and two, the three is going to be a favorite. The two is going to be a strong second choice, which a lot of people pick the two all in saying eight to one morning line. I think they got baited into that morning line. That horse is going to be uh, second choice. 
for taking a little bit of money. It's pretty obvious. Um, who else? The 14, 14 is another one that should take money, but that's a, it's a tough post. Uh, even with the 13 out the 10, a little bit. Yeah, of course. I think that horse is, if you're playing this race exotically, I think I put it something together earlier. I think that's the horse that's worth trying to get out of the mix at a shorter price. Um, and it's actually kind of cold in some of the double pools, which isn't, Nine is taking money. Six is taking more money than the nine, which that should be, well, I guess it depends. Um, it's a little bit, I guess, uh, let me back up. It's a little bit blurry outside of that, but it looks like, as expected, three is going to be the favorite. Two and four are going to be strong second choices uh, with the ten. So nothing nothing really like out of the ordinary that I can see. I think the three is another one of those. Um, if we weren't trade by Cox, it'd be like five or six to one. You know, it's yeah. like if you, to, I don't know. To me, it's like, I, that that's for me an auto toss. Just because of that. I mean, yeah, I mean, the horse, the horse fits in this race. It's like, because, you know, really hasn't done anything wrong at this point. It's been consistent, proven over the racetrack. You know, I mean, it makes sense. Like, broke the maiden on debut, came off a little bit of a layoff, did this route thing had trouble you know like the horse certainly fits now they're like stepping up off an allowance win going to stakes like that's like the typical you know or classic pattern i should say for uh you know for a horse so it makes sense but the but the thing is is the horse is just a short price in a field where maybe some of these other horses have more upside at this point right where with the three it's like you know what you're gonna get it's going to be the favorite because it's the most known horse in the field. Uh, yeah. And it's Gary, Mary, Larry, and Jerry West. So. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or at least two of them. It could be their, their kid. That's true. Yeah, but I mean, the pace, and the pace, you know, looks like, I guess, yeah, this is sort of the other thing was like, if you're looking at the plot, like alone, if you have no other information, it's like, who's the favorite? Right. <laughs> like, all these horses look the same. So that, that to me is like where you just kind of see a wide open race. And this is one, too, where you look at, like, the kind of typical Lucas Greyhound that's already won, you know, it's already run six times. Um, this is the, these are the spots where they tend to, uh, you know, you tend to actually see something out of them, you know? Yeah, that horse doesn't look bad on the plot. No, the plot? It's, it, it's, it's one of those that, you know, if you, if you hadn't been around for the last 30 years with this shit, you know, you'd say absolutely not. But it's just, like, it's guys like Lucas and... Um, uh, Larry, uh, what's his name? He used to be like this too when he Jones. was real active. Who's that? Larry Jones. Yeah, Larry Jones used to be like that with Phillies. You know, he would do kind of a similar thing. You'd see like he had like four or five races. You know, you'd see a little bit of improvement, like kind of like had trouble breaking the maiden. Then all of a sudden, you know, boom, steps up to a stakes race where it doesn't look like it fits and just kind of runs above its, you know, runs out of its skin. So. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't mind this horse. Like doing doing the write up, um, I I was just like, this horse is is a long shot for all the long shot reasons, but is not impossible. This is a horse that like you you're you're not going to play at five six to one, but at twenty to one, stab it, stab away. <laughs> totally, absolutely. And, and in your underneaths, one hundred percent. 
Yeah. yeah, in a race without a standout, in a race without, you know, some unbeatable chalk, it's uh, it makes the exotics that much sweeter. Oh, that was Lucas on the that six horse yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought the I thought the other Brad Cox, this eight horse was like a little bit sneaky in here. Sneaky other Cox. Yeah. I like a sneaky Cox. Who doesn't? Exactly. Um just you know, progressive type hasn't really run like a fast race, so you know you're gonna get the price, but is improving. It's third off the layoff. We got seven minutes there. Let's see what Joe's saying. No, we don't have Joe yet. And then I missed the I caught the tail end of the information at Santa Anita, but it was it was like all normal stuff. Like Miotti is thirty percent trainer with whatever. I think like the weirdest one was like this person, this trainer used to be a jockey. Well, it's helpful. It's. Is that race lens? Is that what uh, race lens has moved to now? Like um, useless yeah. trivia. I, I don't know what it is. I don't even know how to say it. Is it one once? Once? Oh, the, oh, the once? The, the first? <laughs> yeah. what, what is that, first? Once? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one ST? Yeah. One Street? Yeah. It's, called, slash, it's called marketing. One slash poison. Street? That's what it's called. Yeah. It's like, let's start with that. How do you even say what you are? Yeah. Um, let's start with getting the name. Well, I'll tell you, okay, so Santa Anita is coming up. It's the fifth race, 13 minutes. The one is currently even money, and I think that is a bad, bad favorite. And I get why this horse is favored, just because the rest of this field looks terrible. Um, but, I mean, this horse wasn't winning at Los Alamitos. It just kind of runs the same race every time, and going to go a little bit longer hasn't really shown much finish uh the, the two in my opinion is the horse it actually is the one you probably want that horse had trouble last out like legitimate trouble um it was kind of live in that spot i thought it's currently five to one um Baze is riding terrible though like not you know when like riders when riders are cold and you can just tell it's like it's not just like they're getting bad mounts, but like they're just riding scared and their horses like know it and they just don't run. That's yeah, what I, mean, I feel like the horse is for base. Listen, confidence is a big thing in any sport. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it just seems like that. So, so it's a little bit of a liability, but in the face of a, an even money that's worth taking on. Um, I can't remember... If I saw the works of this horse, I forget. I wasn't crazy. I, I know of the first time starters, the one I preferred was the six. So either I didn't, I, I couldn't, I can't, they didn't leave any impression, this one or the seven. But the six, I remember being like, of the first time starters, I thought was kind of the, the better of those. Um... Their guest handicapper is picking four and two. I mean, I guess I don't. I don't know. I don't like four. It's like it's getting class relief, but this horse just looks like a dud. Just can't run. 
So if the four wins, good luck. You did. You you got it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Looks like a dud to me. Who's the guest handicapper? Uh, Ryan Flanders. Okay. Back. I did see some tickets, though. We have some tickets up here. So this is for Rainbow Pick 6. Let me see. Rainbow Pick 6. Tom's going to single the 1. Peter Lurie is going to use the 1 with the 5 and the 7. Once is going to use... <laughs> this is stupid as shit. 1 is using 1, 2, and 5. Uh, Once... Once, once bet AI. <laughs> Stupid his name. Uh, Benny Southstreet. Oh, oh, trip notes pro. So he thinks the fours had trips in those races. Is probably the guess. All right. So is that the once like uh, Watson type thing? Is that what they're trying to do? Oh, maybe. They have so much. They're so uh, like ahead of their time. It, you know, because horse racing has the best technology that they've, they've built uh, AI. Let's start with getting, like, maybe getting a fucking race timed right. <laughs> let's not have, like, our buddy in the stands filming a horse race. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's start <laughs> from with the not, ground. <laughs> not filming on an iPhone 7, and then we can start <laughs> yeah. go from there. But by all means, let's have some artificial intelligence start picking. Uh, we don't have any actual intelligence. Let's start with that. Yeah. Good God. Oh, okay. One minute to race eight at Oakland. What's up with Fairgrounds? Fairgrounds is 16 out. Oh, we can get some gel. You have gel or no gel? Made in 50. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, I guess the six would be the. Oh, what? Why isn't. Am I looking at the right race? Race seven, fairgrounds. The six should be favored. Price winner here at the fairgrounds. Dream Worker, Joe Sharp's other runner, Miss Haven, was the one that was the market mover, but it's Dream Worker at nine to one, I believe, to get the job done for Deshaun Parker. Uh, congratulations to the winning connections. Good he's, one to have in the late. He doesn't even pick the six. Sequences. Four, seven, two. Seven is up next. $50,000 maiden claimer, six furlongs the distance for the three year old Phillies. And uh, let's take a look at the number four. Triple P is the top choice here, liking the price of nine to two for the boss. Steve Margolis, JS Stables, and Mitchell. Oh, Moore. shit. I thought he was going to say Bruce Springsteen. It's about to be a key race at this level, September 24th. I didn't know there was two bosses. Came back and dominated an allowance race at Indiana Grand. Horse that ran third, Sweet Annabella came back and won at the same level at Churchill Downs. Subsequent star ran fourth at Keeneland. That was a tepid paced race. And uh, Triple P just uh, did not uh, keep up that particular day. And no it was keep. a horse that won, went gate to wire, uh, inside speed runner. And the horse was uh, Brad Cox's first time starter that got the job done that particular day. That was Maiden claiming 150 in a field of 10, ran fourth. The Triple P came back at the same level at uh, Churchill in the slot, ran a disc in eight. You can throw that race right out the window. Lost six lengths at the start, never got involved. Now returned Fire to the first time race the first time uh, the trainer, Once color and scheme is too is experience. so distracting. Yeah, I oh I totally agree. It's that's why I had to take pictures because I can't see it like when it's on the screen. It's crazy. Jimbo, if I were to try to beat the favorite Sanity, I'd take a shot with the two curly Issa. Hell yeah. I like that horse. Favorite Trouble last out. Daily double, pick three, and the wind pool at three to two. Tenth on debut, maiden special weight. That was a, wasn't a great maiden special weight. It was good. It was okay. There was a lot of better ones at Churchill. The winner was a Louisiana bred, actually, Medley, who came back and ran third on Louisiana Champions Day. Horse that ran third that day, Ice Baby, came back and won a restricted race. Uh, made in special weight, but restricted, sales restricted here at the fairgrounds. Have I ever was a 10th that day? And 
you know, had a clear trip of the two pad, was five wide on the turn, lost ground, now faces obviously easier competition for Maggie Moss and Cherie DeBeau, new owner trainer combination, and should find clear sailing on the outside. Three to two seems yeah, that, a little bit short to me, but it seems a chance to get the job agreed. To this field here today. It's short, but that horse looks legit. I think this is six, six, seven. Hard. And this one debuted with a pretty good second on May 28th at Churchill over a wet fast track behind eventual stakes winner, Behave Virginia. Then ran into a uh, cancel this. Hidden Wonders. Okay, Seven. that horse is worth upgrading too. Average field for the maiden special weight ranks at Churchill on November the 6th off the bench for Eclipse. Then tried two turns and left from post position number 12. Got tired whoa, whoa. Uh, that particular day. Park of the Nile was a very impressive. Kenny McPeak trained first time starter that went gate to wire that day. And then last night on the turf, tried something new, made the 30s. Made the lead, gave way very late over a turf course that did slightly favor speed on December the 5th. Now cuts back in distance, drops, actually takes a step up in class from 30 to 50, but only really in dollar amount only. This is a pretty equal feel to what this horse ran against on the turf last out. And I think is probably better sprinting than <laughs> not, riding. Not according to optics figure range. Would say route. But that race is much softer. Say sprint number two eclipsed up there at five to one. Number one is Verdandi for Greg Foley, Marcelino Pedroza, tag team racing that a win yesterday. What Sterling miss? Verdandi forty eight to one on debut exits the same race as your favorite. Have I ever? Have I ever, ever was tenth beaten eleven and a quarter lengths. Verdandi was ninth, beaten 10 lengths. So Verdandi actually finished in front of the favorite. That one's getting bad here. Five to two on Verdandi. Broke slowly that day, lost about four lengths, was covered up at the rail, and did very little running after that. But another trainer whose horses usually improve in experience, Foley Barnes showing signs of heating up over the course of the last 10 days or so. Marcelino Pedrosa does a lot of nice work uh, for this team. And 5-2, to two, another one I think is a little bit of an underlay. I mean, I like Triple P. I like the Clips better. They're both 5-1. to one. The two favorites are 8-5 to five and 5-2 five to two respectively. Again, just one more thing. Take a look at the number three, Arlen's Crown, first-time starter for Joe Shit. Hall. I got caught up in this in Petting Frost. What happened at Oakland? Six weeks to the uh, five? Dreamwalker yeah, Dreamwalker. I've ran down the six in the stretch. That uh, pedigree is a little bit on the turf side. Good. A little bit on the slow side. Joe Dumont's got good stats, though, with a pretty solid sample to, size. Let me watch that. Time starters. Sorry, Josh, let me pull this, pull up this race for you. This one won't be tough to spot. Oh, hell yeah. What? Track by hitting a bomb. All right. Ray Roan, as you can see right there. What's going on at Gulfstream? Nieves, Dude. 10 to 1 on the first time starter, Arlene. Plato. Dude, that, whole, that 11 looks legit. Currently 9 to 1. Dory Jacobs. Adam's up there at 6 to 1, getting uh, bet down a little bit from that 8 to 1 morning line. George Montserrat Jr. aboard. And like I said, slow but steady improvement. Auction made in special weight last out. I yeah, nothing nothing is wrong with the eleven. We'll keep keep an eye on that. Good call. I mean, what? Like, why is that horse such a price? Just because the synthetic? Oh, because they they can't they can't see this horse. This horse is finishing off the board. Yeah, this horse is hidden. Cool. I like this. Good catch. Brian goes five, four, six, seven. That horse is off his radar. Oh, 
Fuck, man, I'm... Looks like Steve's just been racing this horse into shape. And he's one of two uh, horses here that I like because he gets the addition of Lasix. Matt Steven being one of them, and King Rob, also first time Lasix here. He's another one that looks like he's going to be raced into shape, and he's been very much King Rob in maintenance mode in the morning since his second place uh, effort in his debut. The number one Mad Steven, as he gets close to me here, he is pretty hot for a cool afternoon. A lot of lather on his neck. Uh, it makes it challenging for the rider if they're not wearing gloves because their reins tend to slip when the horse's sweat gets on those reins. So he is a pretty warm as he reaches the gate here. Unlike the number two, Curly is a very composed. I love the warm up for this three year old gelding with Tyler Beza. I'm going to try and beat the favorite with Curly Asa in here. And the four has made a very good impression as well. Walking boss from the post. Yeah, one is like wasted. Washed out, nicely wasted. At the gate. It is I, post time for race number five. I don't really. What would be the point of racing a maiden claimer into shape? Right? Yeah, it seems like just a it seems like just a lazy statement. Yeah, because I mean you're the horse is up for a tag, so at any point you could lose the horse. So you're not gonna be like, oh, the fourth race will get fit and we'll win. It's like well, you could lose that horse that day. Plan ruined. Like <laughs> good game. Good game if you if that horse gets claimed. There's no I just that would never occur. That is like the red flag emoji. Oh, we're racing a claiming horse. Uh, a maiden claim. Maiden claimer is different. Claiming horse, you know, he's eight years old. He's coming back off a layoff. You know, nobody's going to grab the horse for 10. You know, needs a race. Totally different story. But maiden claimer, I don't know. Yeah, it's. I think it's just a really lazy comment. Yeah. Watching this replay now for uh, so the six, the six duel, yeah, the other five just got the trip. And got got bumped. I mean, that's just that. That's just tough racing luck. I mean, six runs a winning race. Those two are together. They're separated from everybody else. You know, when this a horse like the six is like that was like a win or run out win or run out type horse. You know, it's and also a, not the cool. world's best price on that five. All things being equal, like it's a terrible right. Price. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit they knew. Oh, our boy too is under pressure by the seven. Who's that seven? That first time starter? Come on, two. Come on, two. Seven. Go to hell. Here comes this plotty ass one. At least he tried. And the one got raced into shape, won the race. Good thing. Well executed plan. Fourth That's star. That's why they do it. That's why they do it. I got it. All right. What do I know? All right. Seven minutes to the fairgrounds. Oh, we got a we got a Smarty Jones board. All right. Let's get out of these. Let's get out of these maiden claimers. Had it. Gosh. Go back to this real quick. Yeah, I mean, did have the BTO. All right, we're moving on.
Okay, so as projected, the three is the favorite at five to two. Also as projected, the two second choice at seven to two. The 14 is four. Let me do the plot. 14 is four. The one is six. The 10 is nine. Double digits on everybody else. So we did talk about this race a little bit with the three certainly capable, but in a big full field, got to try to get creative. The two just looks like an underlay to me. Like I just, I didn't mind this horse, but this is like the wise guy, the wisest guy horse in the world. Yeah, it's too much. It's too, there's too many unknowns for seven to two in a field like this. Absolutely. It's like this horse is slow. It has to improve, has to get faster than some of the others. So that's, you automatically need price compensation. Hasn't gone around two turns. Moving up off a maiden win. And it's like, this horse, this horse is fine. I mean, I, I would, you know, watching the races, like, could certainly handle it, but I'm just not a horse that you're taking seven to two on. Um, the one is currently six to one. Uh Ran a good speed figure, first out around two turns, but did benefit from somewhat of a favorable trip. Was behind the pace setters, uh, had run like inside that final furlong. I'm, oh, it doesn't pull up on there. Um, and then what was the other? Oh, the 14. The 14 is a good horse. The 14 could win this race. However, even though now he's in post 13, it's still going to be... It's going to have to work a trip. It's going to have to get the trip that the 11 got, where it's like a lot of the other speed just doesn't go, and they go for position and then can get a trip. But they got caught wide in the Kentucky Jockey Club, and that was kind of detrimental. I like the I like the 14 um, as a horse. Just the post is, is tough. Um, sorry, let me check in on here. Uh, y'all rock, learn a ton on these streams. Thanks for sharing knowledge. I'm out. Okay, bye. Thank you, and thank you for the uh, sub on uh, Patreon. Firestopper 77, Turfway Park Race 9, won the Super High Five at Arlington. What? At Arlington? Tell you what. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, what was I doing? I wanted to watch that Gulfstream race. It's one minute to post at um, at Gulfstream. Can you guys let me know when they're going in the gate? Because that could be 10 minutes from now. It's impossible to know. Um, okay, so some of these other horses, we've got the 10, the 10 at 9 to 1, which is improving type in terms of speed figures. Another one that's going to have to stretch out. Broke broke the maiden. It was a maiden thirty, so some class questions there, and had the race flow on the front end. Doesn't seem like this horse is going to get a a lone lead in here. So the fact that the public's kind of shying off certainly makes sense. I thought that was if that horse is going to be the second choice, was going to be an easy play against. Um, and then everybody else kind of double digits outside of that. So we'll just start kind of from the inside out. Uh, the four was one that was taking money in the doubles, but is pretty cold on the board. I think a lot of that money, not not just the two recent wins, but the barn. Um, so it's a little weird that not taking much money on the board. The five we knew was going to be a big price, 33 right now for, for all the reasons. Um, the six and the nine I'm going to talk about at the same time, not because like I'm horny or anything, but these two come out of the same common race on October 27th at Remington Park, and the nine won that race, and it was a good effort, um, just kind of, it's just kind of a good, like, good racehorse in general, but the trip on the six, that was the horse that you wanted to follow, and then that horse came back, the six bureau, came back and won with a B plus really dominant effort. Um, and then the nine one as well, but kind of fell into sort of the same type of trip. Um, same type of grinding win, even though he's an open length winner. So, uh, 
So that a partial owner change on the nine, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I think that's part of the reason, if anything, that the horse would take money. Um, but anyways, if the six, the six being thirty-eight to one, and the nine being twenty, they're both big prices. So it's not like I'm going to knock them that much. But I would take the six over any day. Um, the stable mate to the six is the seven, an improving type. I think this horse has some run. I just wasn't crazy about all the the changes. I think it's a lot at once, like first route blinkers, rider change. Just sometimes that can be. It's like it could have positive intent, but also be like a little bit experimental. It's a lot, a lot of shit going on at once. Um, the eight is 19 to one. This is the other Cox, the sneaky Cox horse. Um, who I think is that's probably pretty fair odds on this horse right now. Uh, the nine I talked about, the 10 talked about, the 11, 52. Um, I, I mean. That seems kind of wild. I'll be honest. I don't know why this horse is the longest shot in the board on the board. That seems kind of crazy, but I also don't think this horse is the most likely winner. I mean, that horse is like eight to one morning line and is forty eight to one right now. So someone must have bet like ten bucks. Went down a little bit. Still, I mean, you can make a case from that perspective, but that horse has to improve. The 12 is 19 to 1. The 12 is going to, the 12 has some run, is an improving type. Um, but as you can see, just slog. Always slog. Stretching out in distance. Slow start from the 12 post. They're going to have to drop back uh, and make a run. All right, Gulfstream, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. but, all right, cool. All right, let's, let's get this 11. Kind of seemed like from the plot, the 11 would be a little bit closer up to the pace than the horse currently is. You got the 1 and 12 dueling, the 12 tracking right off that pair. 6 is on the outside, the 7 starting to move up inside, 11 is starting to move on the outside, 8 is still covered, 2 is still covered. 11 looks like he's under a ride on the outside. They did speed up for that second quarter, so maybe moving a little bit early wasn't the best. Uh, one is done. Six is starting to make the move. Eleven is still, it's under a drive, starting, responding a little bit. Um, this horse is going to have to work, though. Uh, six, looks like he's going to get the trip. Yeah, eleven's hella wide. No, six is like life or death to hold on. No, he's good. Four is best of the speed. Six, eight, four. I still, oh, an 11 finished fifth. That wasn't a bad, that was, it didn't work out, but I still think that was like the right play in that race. Yeah, you're not going to win a race like that 48 wide. Yeah, yeah. And, and being that, oh, and you end up getting bet down too. So maybe that's not the best play in that case. But I mean, yeah, that wasn't. That wasn't bad. Listen, All you right. make that play 100 out of 100 times over, you know, some piece of shit chalk at, you know, yeah. four to five. So. I mean, the, the chalk didn't even win, right? No. That well, did the six, chalk, end right? up, the six end up being, the six ended up going off at three to one off an eight to one morning line. Are there morning lines just like complete dog shit over at Gulfstream Park? Because the 11, 11 was 15 to 1 and ends up going off at 9 to 2. The 6 won at 3 to 1, and that one was 8 to 1. Is that just like consistent? Oh, 
All right. So I know we had we've had fun on the stream, but uh, we'll go Smarty Jones, and then the morning lines have been super out of whack at Goldstream Park. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Because even when we we're discussing the race, and I was looking at a bunch of shit, so I didn't get to see like where the change was, but. Uh, that was a weird race with how the odds ended up. Yeah, it definitely seemed like it. It's like it was weird from the morning line and even from 10 minutes ago. And even from, even from one minute to post. And I was like, it's one minute to post, but let me know because that could be 10 minutes from now. It's a complete shift from then. But that's crazy. How do you... This is like an ITP moment, but like, how do you... Like, that's not good for the game. No, it really isn't. Like how do you like how do you bet how do you bet like that? You can't. It's impossible. Yeah, it's it's completely impossible. Um, all right, so we'll do um the Oakland race, Smarty Jones, and then um the Santa Anita Stakes race. This is the Joe Hernandez, which is coming up in fifteen minutes. Um this is where they switch. They're not gonna go down the hill in this race, right? They're gonna go out of the chute. I don't necessarily think it's gonna matter because you have a lot of a lot of new faces in this group. Um, the one is currently favored, and I think that the one is being favored right now by default. Beer Can Man, because you kind of have these horses coming from all over, and this is a, a local horse. Um, and I mean, this horse is fine, but you look at his you look at his form. It's like if he doesn't get a perfect trip, he doesn't win. So. Uh, yeah, I just think the horse is favored by default. This horse has been training lights out. Currently 9 to 2. This horse is off those works. This horse looks super live to me. Um chewing gum, uh this horse certainly fits as well. He's got some class. This is a good distance for this horse. Um, it's probably why they're out here running at a little bit longer of a sprint, but is a closer. Closer type, so you need need a little bit of value. It's currently five to one. Um, the six just looks like a horse that's going to need a race. Coming off the layoff, he's been running in mostly those longer races. I just watching his works just kind of got that impression. I mean, he has races in terms of speed figures and class that would win, but you have the barn change, you have the layoff, the distance change. Just kind of seems like uh, you'd want to wait. It's currently eight to one. Um, the five, the five to me kind of looks like a slightly softer version of the one. I mean, speed figure wise, they're kind of side by side. So, I mean, just from a value perspective, not crazy about that one either, but, uh, Momos could be controlling speed. No. Looks like could be a lone speed. So nine to two there. Seven, I, I just don't know what what they're doing with this horse. This is Peter Miller. Um, Peter Miller by another name. I mean, 13 furlongs, 12 furlongs. Let's cut back to six and a half. I mean, you're just throwing things at a wall to see what sticks. <laughs> Can you imagine? I turn on the sound and they're like, they're racing Cupid's claw into shape. <laughs> they're like, no, give him one more 12 furlong marathon race. He's not quite fit enough after that 10, 13, all running back 20 days apart. I think, I mean, it's a little bit stabby because he's a new face, but just off the works, I, I, I do think the two is pretty live in here. Pretty fair price, nine to two. Uh, again, I'm, the favorite is, is whatever. I just think that the one is favored because he's just kind of the known, the known local commodity. Got a, a warm up on the one at Oakland Park, a warm up on the nine at Oakland Park. Frost, I know we're going to go out after this. The nine looks good on the track, which 
that's one thing about that horse that I I like his like will to win, but he was never one that kind of excited me from a from a physical standpoint. So it's good to know that it's a positive physical impression. Let me pull up. What do we need right now? This. How are those Brussels sprouts, by the way? Are you muted? Uh, Jimbo, I went with the nine, don't cross the devil, and the Smarty Jones, like the filled in auto angle. I handicapping this race ahead of time, I thought I thought a lot of people would bet this horse off exactly what you just said. But does have to move up. They're freaking delicious, by the way. Sorry. The Brussels sprouts? Oh my god. I'm missing out. It's nature's it's really it's nature's candy. I'm not going to argue with that. You put enough oil and salt on them? I mean. <laughs> maybe maybe like a side of salmon or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. A side of bacon. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You know what? It's like, what can't you put on them? Yeah, exactly. Versatile. The, the Brussels sprout is the quarter of the uh, vegetable world. True. Big, big, huge square right in the middle of the plot. Right in the middle. Big gaping square. <laughs> and healthy. And healthy. Went with the six. Yeah, you guys are horny. We got a six and we got a nine in the chat. Horny chat. The improving angle. I, I like that too. And again, I mean, just watching watching the six and the and the nine side by side. No, no pun there. Um, they, I like the six. All right, we're going in the gate. Going to get Oakland six minutes to the sixth at Santa Anita. I missed if there was the fun facts. I missed them. I think probably with 
with those fun facts. I played the 14 in the Twin Spires contest, take a couple of connected points. Yeah, I think I think he's a that's a quality horse. I think the three kind of has to prove it a little bit. I think the the 14 as far as class is already kind of kind of stepped up. Um yeah, as far as the the fun facts and it at um once it's like they have just already decided they're like we can't we don't know what to say to horse players. But if some random person comes to the racetrack and they see um this horse is named after a special kind of apple that only grows in Washington twice a year, then that person will be like, Oh, apples, I love apples. That's cool. That's all I can think. Alright, they're off at Oakland Park. The eleven slogged. Is that the slog? Yeah, big time. Uh, the eleven wasn't wasn't the the real Steve Asmussen slog, but it was the it was the horse who just didn't take any money. It's good good on the fourteen cleared. It's getting that eleven trip dueling right with the seven rugs. The Springer that was getting the experiment, the blinkers, the leperu, the stretch out in distance. We'll have to see how this works out. Um, the two is stalking right inside. The four is the other kind of stretch out. Where are some of you other guys? Oh, the 11 starting to make a move on the inside. The nine is wide and kind of getting held up off the pace. Pretty fast, 46. Kind of cooking up there. Um, four waiting to make a move. Here's my the, Lucas snag. Here he comes. Yeah, here he comes. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Come on, five. Somebody has to catch this four. Comes the one, the horse with the experience, got the eight down the outside. The sneaky cocks. Come on with the sneaky cocks. <laughs> uh, one, ten, eight, shit, five. Eight and five are side by side. Where's the three? Three didn't even get a call. I literally think I called every horse in that race but the three. Yeah, it's just the. Where the fuck was that horse? Did he. Was he in the race? Did he show up? Oh, he's on the inside. Down inside, just one play pace. Yeah, that was such like a. You had to just play against that horse for no other reason than it was just no standout in a big field. Um. One got the trip, went inside out, race well. That 11 ran pretty sneaky good, gotta say. At five, any chance that five got third? Probably not, huh? Um, I think I was starting to watch some of the other horses. It looks like, I don't know. Do you have the triple, if that's the case? Yeah, I'd have the triactor if the five got third, but I don't think you did. Mm. How did you play it? I keyed a bunch of horses first and second. I just single, basically had the just the five in the third spot. Wow, oh, okay. That's nice. Not the type of horse that you feel like is going to win and win the race, but, you know, chance yeah. to get bored. 100%.
taking forever on this photo. It's maybe taking a long time. Yeah. Maybe you'll get maybe you'll get lucky here. Third heater. Ooh. Oh, good. nice. nice. Ooh, nice, good hit. Thanks. And, and D. Wayne will run that horse. Uh, you know, that, you'll see that <laughs> horse in the Triple Crown. Uh, he might you'll even see run the horse it, in the Preakness. But he'll run next week first. He'll run next week. He'll be in. He'll probably have to run the Lexington. <laughs> And you'll use the, the same strategy in every leg of the Triple Crown. It'll be 50 to 1, just clunking. I mean, as you know, I'm a working class guy, so it was only a 50 cent triactor because I can't, you know, I'm just a man of the people. I'm from Scranton. I, I still think for 50, I think it'll be 500 bucks. You think so? I'll take yeah. it. That's my guess. What do you think it is? No idea. It just seems like it's like a, a big full field. You have both the first and the second choice horses running out. It's like the only way that, that you would hit that is by exactly punching that ticket how you did. Yeah. Yeah. I basically just used a lot. Like I used one, two, three, four. Yeah. I used seven horses first and second. Yeah. That's like beautiful. Thank you. All right. At the Santa Anita. We have the six looking like lone speed, getting chased by the one. The two is stalking. Bran, that's a name play for the president. Bran. <laughs> stalking right outside. Uh, 50 cent trifecta, one, three, four, oh, 1300. No way. Yeah, thirteen hundred forty and ninety cents. Wow. Woo! It's a banger. Yeah, that seemed I mean, like I said, that was like a just like a race that there's just so much money that was playing that combination, but with the top two. Uh That's cool. here comes chewing gum, chewing gum and beer can. Gum. You, remember you asked me what my favorite uh Yeah. There he is, chewing gum. Well that's what's really most important. I mean, it was great that you you, you got, got that six to win by open lanes, but what's really more important is either what horse would you like to pet or yeah. what's your favorite kind of gum. <laughs> You're a fruit stripe type of gal, I bet. <laughs> I almost said fruit fruit stripe, but I couldn't like I couldn't work in a joke. And I was like <laughs> trying to like get there. <laughs> Big League Chew is good. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dude. Well, yeah, I mean, that's this is definitely shut down the feed after a $1,300 hit. Hit a real. I'll take it. It's for the kind of first time in a long time I'll be I'll be ahead for the year. So. Just be done, like right now. Be done. Like, I quit. I quit. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. No, I do right. think um, it is yeah. good, like to be in a because you, you do lose a little something these days with not being in the you know even an OTB, which you know when you're hanging out with your friends and you're OTB and you're playing races and you're talking about it, it is very helpful. So, mm, agree. Very helpful. Yeah, I miss I miss the old uh, Orleans. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know those are some good times. Yeah, hanging out, listen, hanging out at the key table at the Orleans. Absolutely. E eating uh, top cuisine. Yeah, maybe some cold cuts. Yeah, some claimer loaf. If you're uh, if you're quick on the draw by day three, you might get an ice cream. If you're slow, you'll get stuck with whatever's broken at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. 
yes, let's end on that. So, yeah, I'll um I'll talk to you offline as far as if you want to do a stream like on the regular. Great stream today, Emily and Potus. Thank you both. Thank you for in. Now I gotta go battle the snow. Good luck. Don't uh, don't let Frost like. What does he do? Like you, you like in in extreme snow, or does he find a place to do his business? Uh he likes the snow. Okay. Yeah, he's into it. That's good. Oh, one more question for the road. Thoughts on the seven at Santa Anita, or just thoughts on race seven? Okay, one more for the road. Oh God, we have this race. Um, I just, it's not even, can I say wide open, no opinion? <laughs> wide open, no opinion. Um, I mean, Baffert, Baffert and Velasquez have been winning everything. So if New Grange wins, it's like, fine, whatever. Um, I don't. I'm not crazy about that horse or Rockefeller. And again, either of those two horses, I think the two or the five would be a surprise. I mean, the two certainly looks good on the plot, but I think it's a little bit flatter just because of race shape. Um, the one looks, the one's coming off those recent turf races um, and some of the faster races and has form at the graded stakes level and it is working really, really, really strong on the dirt. So, you know, I, I had to make picks for the race. I put that horse on top, but um I I don't I don't really have a super strong opinion uh in this race whatsoever. Um so sorry about that. No opinion wide open. I'm gonna go with that, my final answer. All right. Shut down, shut down the stream. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so that you know when the stream goes live, hit up the Patreon, all that good stuff, and We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, everyone.